Hey everybody, Morbtron here. Today is July 9th, 2020, which makes it a Tuesday, a reset day, and the start of Season 11. Now, I was holding my breath waiting for the seasonal announcement, and I gotta say, I am thoroughly impressed so far. Uh, now, you get a lot of cutscenes. You're actually brought right into a mission immediately when you start the game. That's why this video is a little bit later than my usual reset videos. But we have a lot to go over. We have a new season pass to go through. And by the way, the new seasonal weapon, if you are a season pass holder, is absolutely amazing. I've had a fun... Like, it's, it's fantastic. It is fantastic. And, uh... Yeah, it's, it's great. It's great. Um, so far, first impressions of the season... Wow. Good, good stuff. The seasonal armor, for what I've seen so far, looks fantastic. There's a lot of quests to do. There's a lot of new things to discover. And, uh, man, the implications of just the first initial quests are fantastic. Bungie, where have you been? For the, like, Season 10 was so bad, and the Season 11 so far is so promising. Uh, but let's first jump into the solar system and see what we have to do this week. Now, I have just done the first initial quest to get back to the tower, uh, starting out with season 11. I have a lot of people to talk to, Drifter included, and apparently something called The Bank Job from uh, Banshee, so that'll be interesting. Um, and of course, Tess Everest wants us to go talk to her as well, because of course there's new stuff in the Eververse, but Bungie did uh, do a, a change -a There's no um, seasonal armor from Eververse anymore. That can be found from the new dungeon, the new dungeon actually unlocks at um, 7 p.m. Central, uh, Central Standard Time, um, or 5 p.m. on the West Coast, or at 8 p.m. if you're on the East Coast, or if you're somewhere else in the world, you'll have to figure that time out. I do apologize. But um, anyway, the solar system. Let's take a look and see what we have. The flashpoint is on the Tangled Shore. Of course, there is going to be a flashpoint as per usual. Uh, other stuff we have going on, let's take a look at Crucible. The weekly rotator playlists are Clash, and we have Showdown. So I will actually be spending some time in Crucible. I'm spending a lot more time in Destiny. I haven't really played this game in a while. I've done my weekly stuff, you know, my reset videos. I've dabbled a little bit here and there to make sure I don't get rusty, but Man, it has been a while since I've been hyped to play this game. So we've got Rumble, Control, Elimination, Survival, and Freelance Survival, and of course, Classic Mix on the bottom. Right there. Um, and in the Vanguard playlist, if we're looking at the Ordeal, um, Grandmaster is disabled until July 21st because the power level is 1,100. So it'll be a bit before people get their gear up to that rank, but if you're going for stuff, if you're going for things, um, Legend is 1,050, which is nuts. Um, I don't think I'll be doing Legend, maybe later, in the, probably later in the week. Definitely not on a reset day, uh, but if we're looking at just getting it done, getting the ordeal done, let's look at the Adept version of it. We have Denial, and that is it. Uh, Taken Vandals summon their shields significantly more often. If we go up to Hero, which is still a match-made activity, we have Sadia's Endurance, because, of course, it's the Corrupted. So this will be a fun fun first ordeal for the season. We have Unstoppable and Overload Champions in here, and if you do happen to go for Legend this week, you will also have Match Game and Locked Equipment, and that's basically it. Hitting 100,000 in this Nightfall, I don't think will be all that difficult. As far as the farmable Nightfalls we have this week, we have Lake of Shadows, which will give you the Militia's Birthright Kinetic Grenade Launcher, and the Exodus Crash, which will give you an Exotic Sparrow. The Festering Core, unless they've added it in with Season 11, does not have any Nightfall-specific rewards. Gambit, um, unless there's patch notes that describe Gambit changes, um, everything is the same with Gambit. Who knows, they might have adjusted something that I don't know about, but the directory looks the same. But of course, you have to talk to Drifter for a mission anyway, so maybe there will be some changes. You never know. 
Uh, but on the moon, don't pay attention to that. That's just something I have to turn in from last season. Uh, but we have Nightmare Hunts here, of course. We have Dominus Gull. We have Tanix, and we have Zydron, the Gate Lord. So people will be doing Nightmare Hunts just for power level increases. But of course, if you are going for um, time trials, it might be difficult to do this early on in the season. But those are the three Nightmare Hunts available uh, this week. Also, of course, the old dungeon is still available, the Pit of Heresy. And I would recommend getting that done this week, especially if you're going for a day one completion of the new dungeon later on today, because it'll still give you powerful rewards. So that's that. That's that's the that's the destination map. But if you notice here on Io, there be a spicy Dorito ship there. Um, so that's that's interesting. Maybe throughout the season we'll see Dorito ships completely flood the destination map. That's probably a pretty healthy guess. But let's take a look at the season. Uh, map, the season doodad, whatever whatever you want to call this, the uh, season 11 season pass. The first thing, of course, uh, you get you get a full set of armor if you do hold the season pass, and this armor looks really good, I gotta say. For the base model seasonal armor, I dig it on a Titan. And this grenade launcher, the Wither Horde, oh boy, is it fun. It um, It's a kinetic grenade launcher, but it kind of um, it shoots darkness. So that's cool. It leaves pools of blight on the ground if you shoot the ground, and if you hit a target, it'll blight them, causing damage over time until they die, uh, and then it'll leave a pool of blight on the ground. So you're kind of like shooting taken energy at stuff, and it is very, very fun. It's very fun. Uh, we have Twisted Energy. I'm assuming that's some sort of new seasonal currency this season. Uh, we have a new thing called an Umbral Engram. A mysterious engram that contains a wide variety of legendary gear. The contents are susceptible to influence. I know they talked about this um, in a This Week at Bunchy blog post. Basically, uh, throughout the season, we'll be able to manipulate what sort of things you get from umbral engrams. That being like maybe weapons or armor, specific types of weapons, specific types of armor, that sort of thing. But I'm assuming for the first one, we won't actually have that available option, or that option available to us yet, if I could words. Um, of course, we have uh, different emotes, things like that. We have Revolution Blade, which is a finisher that uh, I didn't pay attention to right away. There we go. That's cool. You kind of do a backflip and then throw a knife into your opponent's face. Very hunterish. Um, yeah, we have here a Traveler's Entrance Transmat effect. Pretty neat. We have something similar, but the Traveler isn't nearly as detailed. Um, other things, we have exotic engrams. There's also a new type of thing here. Well, that's the seasonal engram here, the mnemonic engram. But we have the seasonal weaponry. One of them is a sword called the Falling Guillotine, and it looks fantastic. That, that looks so cool. Oh my, it, it's... Mm. Man, that, that looks real good. It looks real good, and I'm real happy, and I'm hype. Um, if you do not have the Season Pass, you'll get the Wither Horde at rank 35. So there's that. Uh, we also have the new weapon called the Cold Denial, which is a 340 RPM pulse rifle in the kinetic slot. And this thing also looks really good. It looks like a heavily modified and ornate-looking version of an Amelon pulse rifle. It kind of has the Amelon little whoop de doo right there. I don't know what to call it. But it also has, looks like it has like the same fluid energy tank for the magazine there as an Amelon weapon. But man, does that thing look cool. It looks so good. We have the Warden's Whaler as a Sparrow. And this Sparrow is uh, pretty detailed looking, i got to say. it's it's uh, looks pretty cool. Contrail is... Looks like it's just a little bit wider than normal because there's two jets at the back. So that's pretty neat. Uh, but here's the thing I was talking about here. Exotic Cipher. Historical data preserved as luminous matter, valuable to those who study humanity's past. Present it to either Xur or the Cryptarch to receive a reward. No clue what that does. I guess we'll figure that out. Uh, but of course, we have the regular seasonal stuff. Um, you start getting into the ornaments for this, and I cannot wait to get the full 
seasonal ornament set for my Titan. Um, very reminiscent of Gundam. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's, it just looks cool. Looks very neat, and I want it. Um, and at the very end, of course, we have an exotic ghost shell. I'm not too thrilled about that shell. It doesn't look all that neat, but it, I mean, it's a ghost shell. It can only look so neat. Um, then there's the ornament for the sword. It's called Riptide. That looks super cool. Now we also have an ornament for the pulse rifle somewhere. Somewhere. Right here. Here we go. Dark Waters. I, th I think I like the original more than I like that one. Uh, then we also have the ornament for the uh, Wither Horde. And I gotta say, I like the original more than the ornament. But that looks like a Gambit symbol down to the bottom there with the twin snakes so probably gonna see a lot of the drifter this season is what i would expect to see um but there you go and i guess we probably should go check out the eververse and see what we have going on here we get a free engram cool it's old stuff that's perfectly fine um hmm now new stuff this season Click on the Seasonal tab. Season of Arrivals Starter Pack. So we have a Cuddlebone Ship. Actually, it looks pretty cool. I gotta say, it looks, uh... I don't know. It's a, neat, it's a neat ship. It's a neat ship. That's what I gotta say. A Protocycle. That's cool. That looks very Amelon, I do have to say. And, uh... I think this, this Sparrow is in a short clip. In the live stream this morning from Bungie. But there you go. That's what that is. We have the Season of Arrivals Finisher Bundle. We have the Set and Spike, if I don't cancel it early again. Come on, let's preview. Oh, it's like a volleyball type thing. Okay. The uh, Aerial Snap Kick. Another kick and a ball type thing. Overhead Heel Crush. That looks painful. Alright. Finishers. Eh. We have the Bulwark Hurl. That's a cool Titan finisher, I gotta say. It looks like there's more class-specific finishers as well. There we go. All right, um, let's see here. We have an ornament for... Ooh, what is this for? Titan ornament for the Hallowfire Heart. That doesn't look terrible. I like it. <laughs> Remove before flight. Oh, the Arcturus engine. That's cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, we have the Matter Source weapon ornament. And that is for, of course, the um, Outbreak Perfected. That looks cool. I think that looks better than any weapon ornaments for Outbreak Perfected currently. We have another one for Truth as well. I'll take a pass on that one, though. Uh, let's see. What else do we have for this season? We have Heated Exchange. This is for The Last Word. That looks cool as hell. Digging that one. We have the Head of Its Time for the Wardcliff Coil. Another cool weapon ornament there. Elegant twirl. Let's get into the emotes here. The dances. Your guardian's a ballerina. We have fluid dance. Sure. Yep, that's a dance. Uh, the, the leggy dance. The more ridiculous a dance is as an emote, the better it is. And uh, that's, that's pretty good. I like that one. I like how ridiculous that one is. Study time. Very Warlock-esque emote. You will not see a Titan opening a book unless that's where they keep their crayons. So, eh, I'll get it if, uh, if it ever comes up for Bright Dust. Wacky inflation. Oh, you're a, a wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. We'll definitely be getting that emote. Pumping up. This is a Titan. This is a Titan emote right here. There we go. We have the Air Riff. Need some new Couple Guardians playing air guitar. Fantastic. Move. Fencing Salute. Something about that just says Warlock to me as well. I don't know. Uh, sign of Approval. Now these are the blue quality emotes. Don't know Thumbs up. My uncle finds these things. Minuscule Melody. Are you playing the world's tiniest violin? Is that what that's gonna... Yeah, that's definitely... That, that's what that's gonna say. Eager Beaver. Looking for anything special? Yep. That's an emote. And Victory Shout. 
That'll be used as a taunt in the Crucible for sure. Bunch of transmat effects. I'm not going to look at those. Um, besides maybe this champion entrance. Yeah, it's, it's okay. All right, so let's see here what we have for Bright Dust this week. We have Cup of Tea. This is, of course, an old emote. We probably won't see new stuff for a couple weeks uh, uh, for Bright Dust sales, but you never know. We might see Don't stuff later on um, off, in the next upcoming weeks. We have the Constricting Shell. Got the Hunter logo on it. Silver Snake wrapped around it. Hood of the Exile projection. We have the Byzantium Lotus Shader, purple and gold. And let's see here, in, well, we actually have a lot of shaders down there for Bright Dust. We'll take a look at all of those here. We have the Guitar Solo Emote. We have the Bronco, which is a very old Sparrow. This is from back... This is back a ways, about a year, I would think. Interesting Sparrow, Tex Mechanica. And uh, you have the Machinaform ship. Very broken. Looks like you just pulled it out of a dumpster. And we have the Scarlet Swarm shell. Probably should have been some sort of reward for uh, Shadow Keep type stuff, but you know what? That's fine. We have the uh, the Tickled Catastrophe. That's just a standard no looking ship. The What If ornament for the Monte Carlo. If you want a gigantic um, machete at the front of the Monte Carlo instead of just a gigantic sword. And the shaders that we have for sale. This is an old one from original Destiny 2 release. Viced Poison Shimmer. We have Smashing Success, which is about all the way back from Forsaken. Very ugly looking shader, if I do say so myself. The, um, I can't pronounce this. It's like dark purple, black, and shiny purple. There you go. That is also from Forsaken. And we have the Byzantium Lotus again, for some reason, on this page. And we have just some regular transmat effects and jade coin transmat effect if you're a drifter bro well, there you go that's eververse stuff for this season and that's going to be it for this video i know it's a lot longer of a reset video but it's a new season we had a lot of stuff to cover but that is going to be it for this video so if you liked it leave a like on the video for me i would greatly appreciate it if you're new here if you want to see more destiny 2 content i will be pumping out trying to do daily content again uh starting with season 11 um, probably starting with a review of this really, really fun to use and fantastic grenade launcher. So expect to see that tomorrow. Uh, but that's it. Don't forget to have a good day, everybody. And I will catch you all next time.